Hello, today we will start a new topic. Uh, till now we have been discussing uh, Breve lattices, 14 Breve lattices and 7 crystal systems. We looked how symmetry helps in classification of crystals into these schemes. We will now start a new topic, the Miller indices of directions and planes. These are techniques or tools to specify uh, various directions as uh, when we work with crystals, we need to specify or name different directions and planes in a crystal. So, Miller indi indexing is a standard method which has been which is being used for this purpose. So, let us uh, we will first in this video we will look at Miller indices of directions and in the next one we will take Miller indices of planes. So, let us look at Miller indices of direction. Suppose we have this uh, crystal, a unit cell is shown, a face centered cubic lattice. So, all these uh, large circle are the lattice points and we want to specify a certain direction. Let us say this blue direction, edge of the cube. Now, of course, the cube has this edge, it has this another edge two horizontal edges and one vertical edge. So, I have picked out one of them, this blue one and I want to give a name to it. Of course, in common language I can say that it is the edge of the cube on its bottom face coming out of the screen so to say and this one is an edge lying in the screen and this is a vertical edge and so on. However, Miller indexing will give us a specific notation or a specific system to name this blue line. So, let us look at how we do that, we will go step by step. The first step in Miller in indexing is to choose an origin on the direction. So, I have chosen this uh, back corner as my origin pointed out in red. So, the first step is always to choose the origin and I have highlighted here that on the direction. So, the origin always has to be on the direction, it should lie on the direction or vice versa. The direction should pass through the origin or origin should be so chosen that it lies on the direction. This freedom of choice exists in crystallography. In the crystallographic coordinate system, we are free to choose the origin anywhere we wish. So, if I want to index this blue direction, I choose the origin on the blue direction and I took this point as the origin. The next step is to choose a coordinate system, crystallographic coordinate system with axes parallel to the unit cell edges. So, in this case, I have chosen x, y and z with the 3 x y z directions parallel to the unit cell edges. Here I have read for illustration purpose I have taken a cube even in a non cubic crystal even if the angle between x and y is not 90 degree and even if z is not perpendicular to x and y we will always choose our x y and z parallel to the unit cell edges. This is what is called the crystallographic coordinate system. So, we, we will be using the crystallographic coordinate system with unit cell edges as our axes. So, we have done that for this direction. Now, we have taken this red origin and red axes. The next step is to find the coordinates of another point on the direction in terms of a, b and c. a, b and c are the three lattice parameter. So, in this case they are the edge lengths. So, A is the edge length of the unit cell along the x axis, B is the edge length of the unit cell along y axis and C is the edge length along the z axis. So, in terms of these three vectors, the A, B and C vectors, I, I will now try to express the blue vector which is the vector of my choice, direction of my choice as 
in terms of these three vectors. So, here it is very simple, it is 1 times a because the direction is along the x axis and is of the length equal to a. So, it is 1 times a, 0 times b and 0 times c. So, I just take these coefficients 1 o o to represent this direction. So, I find the coordinates of another vector in terms of a, b and c. So, the first one means 1 times a, the second 0 means 0 times b and then 0 times c. The next step which in this case is redundant, but we will write it out because we will use it in the next example is to reduce the coordinates to smallest integers and this can be done either by dividing by a common factor or multiplying by a common factor. So, suppose we had fractions then we will multiply by some common factor such that the fractions get cancelled or suppose if we had a common factor in all these three then we will divide by that common factor to cancel out the common factor. So, this is a step of reducing the coordinates to smallest integers. In this case and nothing is required 1 0 0 is already smallest integers. So, we carry on with that and then the final step is to just put these three numbers in a square bracket. This is an important step a square bracket is not my choice in this presentation or this slide it is an internationally agreed upon convention that directions will always be represented by numbers inside a square bracket. So, we will follow this convention. So, 1 0 0 is the direction which is represented by this blue line. So, 1 0 0 there is a slight difference between vector terminology and the Miller index of a direction. Although I picked up one vector this blue vector to uh, along this line and you uh, use that to calculate my Miller indices. Once I have found the Miller indices 1 0 0 it is not representing just this blue vector, but this entire x axis. So, the entire x axis as well as the negative x axis can be represented this full line is represented by the number 1 0 0. Another peculiarity of convention here when I wrote the uh, components separately I am writing it with commas, but in the Miller indices I am not using any commas. So, this is a useful convention unless and until we have a two digit Miller in indices for one of the components. If it is only three numbers we write them without any commas and it is understood that the first number is with respect to the x axis, the second one with respect to the y and third one with respect to z. So, let us look at some more examples now. Oh, before looking at those examples one more point. So, Miller indices of a direction represents only the orientation of the line not its particular position in space or also its sense. So, I, I already told that not only the positive x axis, but the negative x axis will also be represented by 1 0 0. If we do not really want to distinguish positive and negative that is to say if we are only interested in the line not in the sense and in Miller indices that is usually the case then 1 0 0 represents the entire x axis. Not only that. <coughs> because what we said about freedom of choosing the origin if we had parallel lines somewhere here then I can again choose my origin here and this will become my x axis or I can choose my origin there and this will become my x axis. So, all parallel directions have the same Miller indices. Let us now look at some more examples. So, again we take this uh, face centered cubic unit cell and we want to index a direction which is starting from this corner and passing through the top face center. So, this direction 
is the direction of my choice. So, I choose this as a coordinate first step to choose a coordinate origin and a coordinate system. So, I chose this point as my origin and axes along the unit cell edges. With respect to this coordinate system, I now write the vector O A. So, you can see to reach O A, I have to go A by 2 steps along x, A by 2 steps along y and then C step along z. So, O A the vector O A is half A plus half B and 1 times C. So, the coordinates which we will use in the Miller indices in terms of A, B and C are half, half and 1. Now, I will use the cancelling of fractions step which we did not require in the previous one in the case of 1 0 0 we did not require that, but now in the case of half half 1 we will not call this direction half half 1, but we will simply multiply by 2 all these 3 numbers to get 1 1 2 and of course, I put them in the square bracket which we have agreed upon to use as a convention for directions. So, the O A direction not just the O A vector, but the entire O A direction will be represented by this Miller indices 1 1 2. One more example, let us look at this black direction. Now, of course, I have to choose the origin on the black line and that freedom is there. So, I shift the origin to this point P on the black line. You can note that when I have shifted the origin, I have kept the axes parallel. So, we have the freedom to choose our origin anywhere, but in a given problem once we have specified the orientation of the axis, the or that orientation cannot change. So, the x y z in the new with the new origin is exactly parallel to the x y z before, the black x y z is parallel to the blue x y z. So, now let us try to index this direction along p q which is one of the body diagonals of this cube. So, if we want to look at this p q we will start with p and you can see that now I have to take a minus 1 step along x, one step along y and one step along z to reach q. So, the p q vector is minus 1 a minus 1 b and 1 c. So, the components are minus 1 minus 1 1 in terms of a b and c. Now, I write this in a square bracket with one additional convention that the negatives are written as bars over the number instead of on the side as in useful mathematics. In the Miller index indexing notation a bar above the number represents negative quantity. So, and it is read also as bar instead of minus 1. So, we will call this direction p q as my bar 1 bar 1 1. Let us now take, so the negative steps are shown as bar over the number. Let us now look at another convention which is used many times. We, we are not interested in just one direction because we have talked about the symmetry in the crystal and crystals can have uh, symmetry and symmetry relates many directions. So, many directions become equivalent because of the existing symmetry of the crystal. So, for example, if you take a cubic crystal, so all the edges of the cube are equivalent by the cubic symmetry. So, if we if we index the edge along x axis, it will be 1 0 0, if we index along the y axis 0 1 0 and index along z axis 0 0 1. But suppose I am not interested in the specific direction, I just want to talk about the cube edges for all directions along the cube edge which are equivalent by symmetry. 
then there is a new notation that you can put the Miller index of any one of them in an angular bracket. So, an angular bracket u v w means the specific direction u v w and all other direction related to u v w by the symmetry of the crystal. And it is important that when we are using this notation, we have to know which crystal system we are talking about, because different crystals will have different symmetry and the symbol will mean different things. We will show you this uh, with the help of cubic and tetragonal examples. So, let us look at first the cubic. So, in the Miller indices of cubic crystal, the 1 0 0 direction is equivalent to 0 1 0, 0 0 1 as well as if we take the negatives minus uh, bar 1 0 0, 0 bar 1 0 and 0 0 bar 1. So, the all 6 directions are equivalent by the cubic symmetry. So, if we simply write 1 0 0, if I pick any one of them, I have picked up 1 0 0, you could have picked up 0 1 0 or 0 0 1 any of these 6. So, any member of the, this direction, uh, this is a family of 6 members, this is a family of symmetry related directions and I pick up any member of the family to represent the entire family. So, when I say 1 0 0 in angular bracket and I know that it is for cubic, then I will mean all these 6 directions. But now, let us look at the tetragonal crystal. In tetragonal, you know x and y are equivalent by symmetry, but not the z. So, if I say 1 0 0 for tetragonal, it will only mean these 4 directions 1 0 0, 0 1 0 and their negatives. The third direction 0 0 1 is absent from here in this list, because tetragonal symmetry does not make 0 0 1 equivalent to 1 0 0. With this we will end this video, in the next video we will take uh, the discussion on Miller indices of planes.